Welcome back to the Metal Exchange. Justin and Chris here with you for another uh, another week of fun. This week, talking about an album from now over 20 years ago, Haggard's Awaking the Centuries. But before we get to that, how are you, bud? I'm doing well. Um, this was a very interesting choice, and uh, I'm looking forward to talking about it. Something definitely a little bit different than the usual fare. Yeah, you know, a lot of the time we're obviously talking about albums that we either really know or nostalgia picks in a number of ways but I, I wanted to do something different where it was really something that we both hadn't heard so you could get a real honest opinion after kind of going and doing a deep dive after a week um but before we get to that anything that you listened to other than the new halloween this week uh did i mention the new halloween came out <laughs> um, actually uh i did get a chance to listen to that yesterday and um it's fabulous based on one and a half full listens so far. Um, I also got a chance yesterday to listen to the new uh, Timo Tolki's Avalon album in full, which had a number of um, really good uh, guest vocalists. And I think we went over that in a previous episode. And I, I was curious, um, I did a little bit of research and found out that, that Timo Tolki really didn't do the bulk of the songwriting on this album, which kind of surprised me. It was actually a lot, a lot of it done by members of, uh, of secret sphere and DGM, um, ha, you know, they were either producers or, or actual session musicians on this recording. And, uh, makes me kind of want to go back and look through the writing credits on the previous Timo Tolki Avalon albums, but I was under the impression and maybe I just assumed that, that, that Timo was doing the, all the songwriting. So I thought that was interesting and it kind of shows because it doesn't really have a ton of that, um, kind of Timo Tolki, you know, uh, signature st style to it. But, um, the guitar parts definitely are very Timo Tolki, but the songwriting, not as much, but that said, it was a very enjoyable listen. I'll, I'll probably, uh, definitely give it another listen. Um, also a couple of new singles came out this week, uh, war Kings, which is, um, a band that is fronted by uh, Serenity vocalist Georg Neuhauser. Uh, they have a new single called Fight. If you like War Kings, you're going to like this song. And uh, another band we've discussed in the past, Wizard Throne, they also released another single. Um, and uh, the song is Hypercube Necro Dimensions, which I believe is also going to be the name of the album uh, when it, the full-length album is released. So... Uh, yeah, those uh, those couple of tracks, and and I finally got a chance to listen to the Seven Spires uh, single, the ten and a half minute epic track "This God Is Dead," which featured uh, uh, guest vocals by Roy Khan of Conception. Uh, so yeah, that was uh, some of the stuff that I got to listen to, including some of the uh, some of the tracks that you have recommended over the last couple of weeks, which I, I really enjoyed, especially uh, "Horizon Ignited." I thought that was that band had a really good track with uh, Towards the Dying Land. So yeah, I, I, it's funny. A lot, a lot of new stuff has been coming out. I haven't heard most of the singles. I did obviously hear the Seven Spires single, which was really awesome. And, and obviously it was typical Seven Spires, but whenever Khan is on something, it certainly has my attention. But I want to go back to the Timo Tolki for a second. Um, you know, it's funny because when I think of the Stradivarius stuff with him, you know, it, obviously you talk about that signature sound. This does not sound anything like the Stradivarius material. It's just like good, hard rock and stuff. And with a weird array of vocalists, not least of which is James Labrie. I never thought I'd hear those two working together. So it was kind of an, um, funny in a way because you think of like, you know, the voice of Prague in, in, for many people. And then like one of the, uh, you know, the seminal guitar players in power metal and you put them together and you, they just, it makes a great track. Um, but whenever you have like Aldo from Secret Sphere and the guys from DGM helping to write material, you're probably going to get something that's pretty darn good. Yeah. And now I'm looking at his previous album, Return to Eden, and it has a lot of um, the same composer credits. So I, I guess this has kind of been... Um, his style uh, as far as having um, these others write the songs for him. So interesting. I mean, he does have partial songwriting credits on some of the songs, but the bulk of it really was taken care of by these, these Italian musicians. So um, I just thought that was, that was interesting. And I just, one other thing before you uh, tell me what you've been listening to um, also uh, Japanese power metal band Galnarius released a new uh, EP called union gives strength, which I have not had a chance to listen to yet, but um I've heard very good things about, so I look forward to giving that a listen. 
Yeah, you know, it's funny. They're they're a band that um, kind of goes under their radar in many circles, but they have like a bit of a cult following, and um, I'm looking forward to hearing that myself. Uh, just two things I want to mention. Um, Machine Supremacy, which is a band that you want to talk about underground, they're kind of big in the video game circles, but they're not really so big in the power metal circles, although I think they should be because I just happen to love them. They had released a new single called Empire of Steel. It came out about a week, uh, week and a half ago. I finally got around to listening to that. It wasn't my favorite song by them, but whenever they when they, whenever they come out with uh, new music, I, I obviously give it a listen. They have um, probably about five or six fantastic albums to their credit. And although this was kind of a one-off, it was actually a cover of, a, of another group. Um, I was very happy to hear new music from them, and I'm hoping for a new full-time album in the near future. I know you like them a lot as well. Yeah, I think I had meant to mention that last week, and it, it might have just slipped my mind. But yeah, I, I kind of uh, echo your sentiments on the song. And then um, one other album that came out, which was a complete surprise to me, the album was called Invoke Determination, and the band was called World of Damage. And it featured um, the guitar player from both Jorn Land's solo project as well as Chrome Division. I'd never really given him much mind other than I thought he was a pretty good guitar player, but this album was really, really good. Um, and, and it features a number of great singers, um, Shagraf from uh, Dimo Borgir, Roy Kahn, uh, Bjorn Street from Soil Work and Night Flight Orchestra, as well as some others. And I was just really impressed. I thought the mix was great. And I thought the guitar work, not surprisingly, considering a guitar player wrote the album, was just really, really good and some of the best riffs I've heard all year. I'm definitely going to post uh, post something from this during the week. I was just so pleasantly surprised by this band. I'm looking forward to hearing more stuff. I hope it's not a one-off. That's uh, quite the... Quite the cast. I, I definitely uh, have to give that a listen for sure. Yeah, this is uh, definitely another one that kind of went on the, under the radar a bit, but I think that uh, I think you'll definitely enjoy it. And it's it's got because you have such a wide diversity of vocalists on this. Each track really does sound very different from the last um, because you because again that you have just so many different styles on here, but somehow it works. And when you put it all together, it was an album I really enjoyed. I I, I, go, I will definitely go back and listen to this. Um, at least a couple more times because it was it was it was that enjoyable. Uh, but with that, let's let's get to the reason why we're here. Uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Haggard is is a band that I had never paid any mind to, and I was shocked when you told me that um, you had been recommended to listen to these albums in the past. Again, my first exposure was seventy thousand tons of metal. When I see this massive band on stage in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, where they have uh, you know, cellos and flutes and violins, and obviously the, the you know the guitars and drums that we're all used to, but with a backing choir, it was just such an over the top production. And although I only caught what I now know to be a song or two, I was just really curious to hear more. And because this particular album from two thousand was considered to be one of, if not their best, and they only have four of them. I figured let's give it a shot and let, let's give it a listen. So I'm really curious to hear your thoughts. Um, just by way of background, Haggard is a German band. This was their second release, if I'm not mistaken. It came out uh, in February of 2000. Uh, and, and it's kind of an interesting track, you know, choice of, of music here because you have 12 tracks. It clocks in at just about 38 minutes w without the bonus track. And in, rea in reality, there's only like five full length tracks on the album, and even many of them are short. Um, so I'm curious to hear what were your thoughts when you were hearing this for, for really the first time doing a deep dive into the band? Uh, well, I mean, I kind of felt the same way you did when I first uh, randomly just heard Haggard come on, um, just like a random track through shuffling a massive library that I have. And thinking the same thing like this is very interesting it's very different but like in a in a good way like in a in a unique way i i don't know i mean maybe the closest thing i could compare them to is maybe therion in, in a certain way but even then it still has its kind of its own feel to it and, and what it made me think of was so um when bill Hader was still on saturday night live he used to have this character named Stefan who would uh, come on during the weekend update segments. And he would talk about the, the coolest uh, nightclub 
in New York at that time. And he, it would be a made up thing and be like, you know, he'd say something like, um, this club is called rave and it's got everything midgets and dancing poodles and, and whatever. So <laughs> like when I was listening to this earlier today, it just made like, uh, it was like the, the name of the band is haggard and it's got everything. It's got symphonies. It's got death vocals. It's got acoustic guitars um, so it kind of gave me like this, this Stefan vibe of, of like, there's just a little bit of everything going on. There's like, uh, there's like, um, like almost like radio, a- it reminded me of the radio acting days, but in t- t- totally different languages, yeah. there's like narration in English and there's acting in German and Latin and oh my God, like this is, it's c- incredible to me how much they crammed into 37 minutes. Um, it, it's just it's just there's so much going on like it's and as a rochester guy i'm surprised you didn't compare it to like a garbage plate right like that where where basically you order it and they just throw the kitchen sink into this plate of food that's what this is right i mean in in reality this is this is the garbage plates answer to uh i guess we'll call it symphonic death metal i'm not again you can't even classify it because it's so out there and i think that that was part of what i actually liked about it because you, you know, you want to talk about zigs and zags. This wasn't zigs and zags. This was zigzags and you're going to alpha omega. I mean, like it's all over the place, right? Like you, you have no idea what the next track is going to be. I'm going into my iTunes right now and changing the genre for Haggard to garbage plate metal. I mean, I think it's, I think it's appropriate. It's, it's so um, unique. And, and I love the Therion comparison just to start because that was the closest thing I could come to myself. Although to say that they are Therion clones would be in a, a absolutely incorrect yeah definitely I, not yeah but yet at the same time it's you know it, it's funny because when you read reviews of the band everyone's calls it something else obviously symphonic metal i've seen black metal i've seen death metal i've seen doom metal and and i guess the reason is because there are components of all of this at different points on the album um it was it was definitely definitely a unique experience and I, I guess with no better way to get into it than, than just talking about the album itself the album starts off with uh you know basically this chamber choir for 38 seconds before it goes into another introductory track called pestilencia which is really i guess the introduction to like this drum march going into like a folk hymn i i, I guess would be the best way to describe it yeah i mean that i i don't know that i would have been able to describe it any better the, the the album is is telling this story about uh Nostradamus during the black plague um and so uh this this intro and it's also the outro as well is the the choir um from Rachmaninoff um and i think that it's actually um from the actual recording the original choral work. I think so too, which is, I mean, kind of interesting because a lot of, you know, a lot of symphonic bands will either score their own pieces or they'll, you know, cover certain classical, classical pieces. But here you're just basically taking it right from, um, you know, right from the man himself, if you will. Yeah. I definitely got like a, um, an epica or after forever kind of vibe to the way they use the symphonic elements. Um, in certain areas. So, um, I mean, it was almost like this kind of like, like blend of, of a lot of different, remind me of a lot of different bands. Therion for sure. Definitely a little bit of early Epica or, or after forever. Um, but yeah, like you said before, like a lot of these first few tracks are just kind of short interludes or part of the actual storytelling. Um, I, I wish I had more time to kind of like maybe get some translations of some of the, 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 um, foreign, foreign language parts, but, um, you know, it's definitely a, you could definitely tell that there's a story being told here and the beginning of it start, like you said, starts with this, you know, the symphonic piece goes into, um, Pestilencia, which has kind of this, um, foreign language kind of, it definitely sounds like some sort of narration is going on. And then, and then it goes into uh, heavenly damnation. Yeah, and, and when it comes to these spoken word parts, even if you don't have the translation, I, I think you can tell that whoever is speaking is obviously in, in anguish and pain, which again, when you go back to what this album is about, when you're talking about Nostradamus' experience during the Black Plague, 
not surprising, right? And you can tell that there is this anguish there, which kind of lends itself to a lot of the vocals that you hear, or the male vocals that you hear throughout this disc, which is, you know, that that death metal vocals that that permeate the entire album, which is kind of fitting for for the type of music or the story that they're trying to portray. Yeah, and, and it's definitely like, you know, when it comes to death vocals, uh, for me, they are very hit or miss. This is the type of death vocals I actually uh, don't mind at all. Um, I don't know if I would go as far to say as I enjoy them, but um, <laughs> it's it's not like a, a, you know, a channel changer, I guess you could say for me. Like, I, I think that they're well done in, in this style. And um, and, and it's I, I thought it was really interesting how um, the band is like every album is like a a different lineup and every time they play live, it's a different lineup. And I'm sure we'll, we'll probably get more into that um, when you talk about the live experience, but um, I thought that was really cool. And I guess that kind of explains why the albums have been so few and far between, but um, yeah. So uh, what, what other, what other thoughts do you have about the uh, kind of the beginning portion of, of this album? So you get into Heavenly Damnation, right? It's the it's the third track, but it's really the first song on the album, if you will. And even that had a bit of an intro vibe to it. It didn't just – it wasn't like a cutaway to this something different. It really was building to something in my opinion. But my first thought about that track was the Castlevania Symphony of the Night soundtrack and specifically those those – parts of the game where you're in the library and those books are flying at you. <laughs> I thought the music was just perfect and lent itself to that. Um, and then this is your first taste of the death metal vocals mixed with that real classical folk. Um, and, and I really like this track, but I just thought it was a little short. I wanted more. And, and, and it was almost like they gave you a taste on that track of, of what might be coming. And then it goes right into um, final victory, which was kind of uh, just a, Similar vein, obviously, but here you have a track with multiple vocalists. Um, you know, it's a lot going on there for another short track, but kind of different from Heavenly Damnation. But I, it, it's take, and I guess the whole time I'm thinking to myself, all right, we're about eight minutes into this disc, and it's really just starting to percolate for me, and it's getting better and getting better. And then before you know it, it goes into another. Um, interlude if you will with the fifth track which is uh and i'm gonna butcher this but i'm gonna try my best it's uh Satarella la manuela or manuelina uh, another you know introductory track um with with this like classical almost pirates of the caribbean feel to it it was it was really cool but again you, you almost lost the groove there because you had these two short tracks that preceded it and then it was another segue yeah um i uh i found that like <laughs> the songs on this album were like when they were the longer tracks, you thought that they were over and then you realized they were still going on. And then the shorter tracks, you were expected to go on longer and then they just kind of end. So yeah, um, it was very abrupt in certain ways. Yeah. It, it's very interesting. Like the songs are either like, like pretty meaty or like rather short. So um, th this leads into awaking the centuries, which is the title track. And, um, this is my song of the week. Oh, I I'm with you. I, for for and I'm going to just cut you off right there. I am in complete agreement. And I want to hear what you have to say, but for the first time I guess ever, we 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 have the same song of the week and I'm, I'm I want to hear your thoughts on this track. Yeah, I I'm from what I understand this is the most well-known song on the album. I could be wrong, but um I think there was a um, there may have been a music video made for it. I know that there's they actually released a live DVD the the year after this was released of them doing this album, which I actually want kind of want to buy now and add it to my DVD collection just because I think this this album in a live setting would be super super cool to see. But um, this song just uh, again I think it kind of it it, it wraps all of the things that are going on on this album all into one nine and a half minute track. Um, really epic stuff. The, 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 um, the chorus with the death vocals is, is super catchy with the, the symphonic uh, melodies going on in the background. Um, I just, I don't know. This song was just really catchy to me and really enjoyable. And it kind of um, slows down a bit towards the end. And that's, this is another one of those tracks where like, I look down at my phone to see if I was onto the next track and I'm like, Oh, I'm still listening to this song. Um, 
So, uh, yeah, curious to hear what your thoughts were as well. Yeah. So when I heard this track, I said to myself, I recognize this. And I realized that this was the song I heard them play on the cruise. And so my exposure to the band and what really prompted me to do a deep dive and ultimately do this episode was hearing this track live. Although when I was hearing it, I had no idea what it was. This song is phenomenal. And I would honestly say that if the rest of the album was a little bit similar to this, or if there were other tracks kind of like it, um, I think the album would have been even more of a hit for me because I thought this track had it all. And and it reminded me, you know, you mentioned that early Epica stuff. Uh, I really heard it on this track. Not that his vocals were the same as a Mark Jansen, but that early Mark Jansen vocals had a very similar style to me. And I just thought, I said to myself that, you know, here we are, it's the middle of the disc. And it was really the first song that not that that I can say that I absolutely loved. I was floored by this track, and and I loved the fact that you know in the middle of the song it kind of slows down and then it starts picking back up again. I thought it was just really well done, and I think there's a reason why it seems like they played this live at all of their live shows because um, this this was to me the best track on the entire album. And th- and there and we'll talk about the rest of it in a little bit. There are some other really good tracks here, no, no question about it. But when I heard the chorus, I said, this this is what I remember seeing on the boat and saying, I, 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 this is this is great stuff. And, and sure enough, it was because it obviously I remembered it from, you know, a year and a half ago and I only heard 10 minutes of it. Yeah, I, I again, echo your, your sentiments. Uh, really, really good song. Easily the longest song, definitely the most meaty song on the album and kind of just falls like dead center right in the middle of, of this of this whole uh you know, 37 minute piece. So it's, it's well placed, I think too. And, and I think it's really, I agree with you where things really seem to kind of pick up and, and, um, you know, there'll be two more like really full length songs, uh, after this. And then again, a bunch of like segues and, and the the closing, um, reprise of, of the Rachmaninoff choir, um, but yeah, yeah, this is, uh, I, I also kind of figured you were going to pick this song too. When I was listening to the album, I was like, I think this is going to be the, the week that we have the same song of the week. I just, yeah, this is, um, it, it really resonated with me and I'll, 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 I'll say this, some of the other tracks here, are, even going forward, I really enjoyed, but this, this, this was the one where I said they, they, they kind of hit it out of the park. Um, the track finally ends and then you go into this another again another minute 19 segue I guess where you have these again it's like that spoken word over the acoustic uh, guitar which is really really cool but again it's only a minute right so by the time you're kind of getting into it they they do another shift and then they get to what I guess would I would call my you know maybe my third favorite song on the album which was in a full moon procession which was um you know, it it's it, it it starts off as this ballad, which was awesome, and then slowly, much like they do, it picks up, but in in this doom kind of way, almost like a candle mass kind of kind of feel with 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 those uh, early candle mass tracks. It's it's I, this was the track where when they say they're a doom metal band, I got it because this was this was that, but it was done. I well done. I liked it a lot, but I can't help but think of like some of that early doom material from the eighties with candle mass. Yeah, I, I I agree with you. Um, I also enjoyed this song as well. I mean, it, it's kind of hard to like. I, I mean, when you say like you you know your third favorite song, I feel like there really is only. I guess you can kind of consider the final victory a, a full length track or Heavenly Damnation, but they are still kind of short at like three and a half and three minutes respectively. And then you have these three more meaty tracks and you know, awaking the centuries in a full moon procession. And then the, uh, the prophecy fulfilled and the dark night entered track. Um, but yeah, uh, I, the, as far as the full length tracks go, especially the three that I just mentioned, I enjoyed these a lot. And I think I would have enjoyed the album more if there was more of these kind of meaty tracks and less of the, the storytelling and the segues, which I know is not the point of the album, but just from a musical standpoint, that's kind of how I feel that like uh, it left me wanting more of this type of, of more, fi- you know, more full tracks, I guess would be. Yeah. Because it, it. It, look, if you know, going to the 10th track, just jumping ahead for a second with prophecy fulfilled and the dark night entered. 
another meaty track, and I thought it was really, really good. You know, I guess I'll say it's my second favorite, um, you know, part, part, you know, second favorite song or what have you. The first part being this heavy growling, um, you know, these heavy growls with these with these kind of monster, again, almost doomish riffs. And then the second part, which is really the folky symphonic part. Um, but somehow, even as one song, you know, packed into a six minute package, it works. And and what and then the next thing you know, the album's practically over for all intents and purposes. And I said to myself, I just wish there was more meat on the bones here. And maybe there is on their other albums, but because of the interludes, which work, you know, the album clocks in at about 30, as I said, about 38 minutes. If the album could have had one or two more epic tracks on it, I would, I think I would have ultimately rated it higher, but it was just, it was what were, what it was missing was just a little more girth on there. Yeah, it was, it definitely felt like a get in and get out <laughs> kind of situation, which is unusual for this style of music for a symphonic metal album. I mean, usually you, it's this long epic kind of, I mean, even Rhapsody's Legendary Tales, which we spoke about last week, um, you know, has a good 10 minutes on this album. So um, I just, yeah, I thought that it kind of, again, like, I think that they had a goal in mind of what they wanted to to do on this album. And it's tell this story and, do, and you know, make the long tracks long and make the short tracks short and, and tell their story and get in and get out. And, and they certainly succeeded in it. But, um, you know, I, I was hoping for more l larger kind of longer, uh, tracks in, in the vein of the three that, that we had mentioned, but, um, uh, of what was given, I thought this was a very enjoyable album. And I, I actually pulled up a, uh, an article that was written about a year and a half ago in, um, metal hammer magazine um by dave ling um talking about the 10 essential symphonic metal albums and this album was uh they weren't in any any particular order but this album was listed amongst uh i'll, I'll read the other nine um nightfall in middle earth by blind guardian symphony of enchanted lands by rhapsody uh five the new mythology suite by symphony x which we've talked about Secret of the Runes by Therion, Decipher by After Forever, The Silent Force by Within Temptation, The Black Halo by Camelot, uh, Dark Passion Play by Nightwish, and The Quantum Enigma from Epica. So that's some very, very major company that um, they were placed in. And uh, here's what Dave Ling had to say about this album, Awakening the Centuries by Haggard. Uh, the name of Haggard may be unfamiliar to casual fans of symphonic metal, but the Germans have existed since the 1990s, albeit in more death metal style earlier in incarnations. While rivals tend to utilize keys for orchestral effect, Haggard prefer to keep it real. Their lineup pretty much a revolving door of players, most of whom wield traditional medieval instruments as though they were weapons. <laughs> so I, I thought that was a really well put uh, way to kind of describe the album better than I probably would have been able to. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about you're up there with nine of the heaviest hitters in the genre. Um, so to be named alongside them is is really impressive. And I guess really what it makes me want to do is go back and listen to some of their other stuff because even if even if there's just a couple of tracks like a, like the title track on this album, I want to hear those because they're it was that good and that well done. And even though the album as a whole left me wanting more. There was enough here that made me really curious about about their other stuff, and 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 it's not the length by itself, right? Because if if a melodic metal band like an Eclipse or or something like that releases a forty minute album with you know nine or ten rocking songs, I love it. In fact, I, I don't necessarily need to hear sixty minutes of of a band like that. But with 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 so many different styles and genres and 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 parts and and and. Um, members of this band with all these different things going on. I just wanted a little bit more because I thought I could handle it. Right. It, you know, by putting another 10 or 12 minutes or another song or two on this disc, I don't think it would have been overkill. And I don't think it, the, the listener would have been exhausted at the end of it. To the contrary, I think it would have just made me excited to, to spin it again. Um, but if there is anything good that came out of the short disc is I played the hell out of it this week because I kept wanting to hear certain tracks again and again. Yeah, I listened to it six times this week, and, yeah. and it wasn't really until maybe the end of the week where it really started to kind of click for me, because I think the fact that it is so varied throughout the 37 minutes that 
it's hard to kind of focus on it and get a real feel for the album as a whole. And it really did take a few listens for me. Um, and I, and I just, out of curiosity, just kind of took a look at, at their other albums. And it does look like that the other albums have more of a traditional uh, kind of setup where, uh, where there's l- more longer tracks. I mean, segues and shorter tracks are definitely a part of all of their albums, but just not quite to the degree that, that this one does. Um, and I agree with you. I, w- I would be interested to definitely go and listen. I mean, like you said, they only have four albums, so I would be definitely interested to giving those other three a listen. And like I said, I, I definitely am going to keep an eye out and see if I can get a, a hold of this um, Awaking the Gods Live in Mexico DVD where they um, where they play this in its entirety live, which I think would be kind of a cool thing to, to see. Yeah, totally. And and it's they 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 have you know they have not released an album since two thousand and eight. So I don't know if uh, if they're just not doing it anymore or if they're just on a long hiatus or what the plan is there. But what I can say is they have played seventy thousand tons of metal three times, and it seems like every third year they're on the boat. So maybe about three years from now, when 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 cruises are, are a thing again, uh, they'll be back, and and I'll I will definitely make a point to watch their whole set next time because, like I said, the 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 live show is is definitely an experience, and and I kind of want to see the DVD myself because. I just, again, it was only 10 minutes, but I remember that live show vividly enough. And the song obviously stuck in my head because I, I figured it out immediately that it was the title track from this album. When they, when they performed live, um, like how many people were there on stage? Like what instruments were kind of represented? What was that? Was anything pre recorded, or were they literally doing like everything right there live? Yeah. There is so much going on here that I, I that, you know, when it comes to French horns and, and concert harps, there's definitely uh, something missing from the live show in that regard, or it's piped in. But if memory serves me correctly, they had the flutes, they had the violins, they had the violas, uh, they had obviously the pianos, but they, but it's more than just pianos because it sounds like there's other um, other percussion instruments as well that are that are on this on this album. Obviously, the acoustic guitar, the electric guitars, and then a mini choir with about three or four people, or could have been up to six if, if memory serves. Um, but there was it was just it was a monster setup on this on this boat, and the setting was just perfect because it was a it was a warm eighty five degree day in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, and and, and they are clearly very good and 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 and, and well rehearsed even for a live show with you know presumably just different people each and every time that they play i was really impressed and they've they've charted in germany and they've done successful tours of mexico and other places as well and it seems like they're still able to rely on just the four albums that they that they've had because they're still playing live shows to this day and playing festivals around the world i remember seeing them at a recent vakken festival and even though I didn't watch the set or or even know about the band, I just remember hearing about them because they're still, like, you know, relying on these four albums to have a successful touring career. Well, I just jumped on Amazon to look if they had the DVD, and it is being sold by a third party for two hundred and fifty two dollars and sixteen cents. So uh, to eBay I go. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that, I guess obviously rare. But I'm sure that uh, you know you may have to get a little creative to get your hands on it. I'm, I, but it, definitely worth seeing, and, and uh, something I'll, I'd be curious to see for sure. Do you? Uh, do you uh, want to give this? No, you can't. You can actually find um, reasonably priced. I mean, not very many, but you can find reasonably priced uh, copies of the DVD on eBay, and I'm, I might actually go ahead and and do that myself uh, and add it to my ever growing live DVD collection. Um, nice. So yeah, uh, just don't. Don't buy it on Amazon. That would be my advice. <laughs> or at least not from the guy who's selling it for 250 bucks. Scale of 1 to 10, what, what are you giving this? Because it was definitely a unique a unique listen. Yeah, I, I give it a 7.5. I thought it was very good. Um, it just like I said, I wish there was a little bit more meat on the bones. But um, uh, definitely, I think that the um, the praise is 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 deserved. And, and uh, you know, I, I'd say... It was. I, I was expecting to rate it lower, so um, I think. Uh, it, yeah, I think it lands right there at a seven point five for me. How about you? I think the title track was probably a nine point five. I loved it that much. I think the rest of the album was probably a six or a six and a half, even though I liked it. 
the whole package when you put it together. It's a seven for me, which is a you know it's, it's a solid grade. Certainly not not some, some, certainly something I would listen to again, and and certainly want to hear the other albums. I'm I'm curious to hear how they compare, being that it is so many different musicians on those discs. Um, but it's a, it's it's a seven for me. It's a, it was it was it was a fun listen. I'm to be honest, I'm glad I chose the album, uh, and, and I I I I thought it was a really um, interesting piece of music and and different from almost anything that I've heard before. So kudos kudos to them for that. And as we put a bow on on Haggard, I'm I'm really curious to hear what we're doing next week because as I said before, we don't discuss it in advance, so it's always a surprise for me. Yeah, um, I don't know that it should be too much of a surprise to you, but um, I would. Well, I, I just have to say we need to talk about this new Halloween album. So that's what I am choosing for for next week. Um, I was planning on listening to it pretty much every day until the next time we record, anyway. Um, so yeah, that's I don't really have much else to say, but we need to talk about this album so this will be i think our most current album uh review or, or discussion that we've ever done it's certainly timely being that the album just came out and i'll admit as excited as i have been for this album and it's it's literally you know almost 30 years in the making uh i have not heard it yet and if there's a little bit of a fear factor there because Everyone is saying how good this album is. So I have these lofty expectations, not least of which were the singles that came out because both of them were just absolutely um, amazing. So I don't, uh, but, but at the same time, I'm scared because I just say to myself, how good could it possibly be? And I think back to the Pumpkins United show, which I'm sure we'll get into um, at least in some detail when, 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 we, when we talk about this. I obviously want to listen. I obviously was going to listen and I actually had plans to listen as soon as we finished recording. So I'm going to hit stop soon and, and, and put it on. I think it's, I think it's so timely and so um, transformative for us that I'm happy we're doing it. I just am a little scared that it's not going to live up to the expectations, which are at least for me through the roof, because I haven't heard anyone Halloween fans, new and old. I haven't heard anyone say that the album is less than spectacular. Uh, I mean, I, like I said, I've listened to it once and then again about halfway through earlier today, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed, but um, I'd be curious to see if you are. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, I guess we'll have to wait a week and we'll, we'll certainly figure that out. I'm going to put it on now, and uh, you know, I think that's a perfect choice. It'll be the first band that we've done twice. We did Walls of Jericho, which was their first album. And now we're doing their most recent album, so it's kind of uh, putting bookends on that, if you will. And 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 let's just say that of all the bands we've talked about, I think that this is literally literally one of the most uh, anticipated releases in my lifetime. That's how excited I am to hear new Halloween music with Michael Kisk. Oh yeah, I mean, all I can say is that I, I the fir- the very first track just like blew me right out of the water like just right from the get go like I was just like oh my god um so yeah and I think you'll feel the same way once you hear it but um little little doubt about that um I'm looking forward to it and it gives me a good excuse to play the hell out of it this week because probably would have done it anyway once I once I kind of got over the hump and put it on for the first time I'm sure I would have had it on repeat but now I have an excuse to do it so. Thank you. I appreciate that. And we'll come back to you. Uh, we'll come back next week with, with the new Halloween. I'll just say that uh, we appreciate all the feedback. As I've said it many times in the past, the likes and the follows definitely, definitely help other people to find the show. So please do that. Interact with us on social media. Uh, we appreciate that. We know you're out there. So keep on listening. And uh, thanks for everything. We appreciate it. Yep. And public service announcement. There is one less Haggard DVD on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You play, uh, you, so this was uh, this was uh, this was not in vain. I look forward to watching that. So thanks for buying it. Yep, you got it. I appreciate it. We'll uh, get back to you with some Halloween next week. And until then, in, enjoy. Take it easy, bud. I'll, I'll talk to you soon. All right. Take care.